What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Scatter tutorial for you. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use Scatter to only place objects on surfaces that are over a certain steepness. So that's gonna allow you to place objects on flat areas of terrain, um, like trees that wouldn't necessarily grow on something that's a little bit steeper. So um, let's go ahead and just jump into it. So we're going to use a terrain that I found in the 3D warehouse. So if you go to the 3D warehouse, I've downloaded a terrain. It's called the Mountain Terrain by Jeremy Inn. So you can download this and follow along. Um, one thing I've done is I've exploded that and also got rid of the background. So I've exploded it so that our water and our surface here are basically different groups. And so we're gonna use this and we're gonna scatter this low poly tree that I've downloaded from SketchUp's low poly plants collection. So in this case, this is just the Icon Z7 tree. So it's a very simple tree. Um, I don't want to deal with tons of geometry or anything like that for this tutorial. And so what we're going to do, and some of you that follow me on multiple channels might note that I'm releasing a very similar video on how to do this with another scattering plugin in Blender at the exact same time. So totally different developer, different software, but I figured we'll talk about it here too with this SketchUp tool. And so I will link to scatter in the notes down below. By the the way that is a paid extension. But what we want to do in Scatter is remember that the way that works is you want to run it by clicking launch and what you need to do is you need to give it a host. So in this case it's going to ask us for a grouped surface. So I'm just going to click on this button and then click on our surface just like this. So notice how it selects the surface and we get a bunch of dots in here, right? Well we don't want dots. What we want to do instead is we want to give it an object to scatter. So we're just going to click on this button and then click on our tree right here. And so there's a few things you might notice. First of all, this is a lot of trees. We don't necessarily need this many. So we can go down and we can reduce this just by adjusting the items per unit. So instead of 025, let's say 008, something like that for right now. So notice how we have trees that are scattered all over this surface. Well, that's not necessarily realistic because in real life, when things are a certain steepness, trees don't really grow on them, right? So if we were to scatter this right now, so if we were to click on regenerate, notice how it's gonna drop a bunch of trees on these vertical surfaces. We don't really want that. Um, it's also placing them underwater, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna scroll down and we wanna find the option for slope range right? And so what slope range is going to allow us to do is that's going to allow us to tell this, okay, on a surface over a certain slope, don't place objects. So notice how right now it's set at 90 degrees. So really anything up to a vertical surface will get objects placed on it. Well, let's say we were to take this and we were to adjust it down to something like 45 degrees. Notice what happens up here when we do this. So we're going to drop this down to 45 and then I'll just click off of here. Well, notice how these no longer have red boxes on them, right? What that means is that means that Scatter looked at this and it saw the vertical surface of this object and decided that there shouldn't be objects in here anymore. Now, notice how this was placed in here. We don't necessarily want that. So I'm gonna click on regenerate. And when you click on regenerate, it's gonna update your tree locations inside of your model. One thing you might want to think about is checking the little box right under this for render only. That way it's not going to generate the actual geometry in here. So if you have high poly objects, you don't want to slow down SketchUp that way. And so now let's take a closer look at some other placement op or placement things inside of SketchUp. Let's say, for example, that we didn't want our trees underwater. Makes sense, right? So what we're going to do, because we've already masked these out based on steepness, but we also want to add a clipping area. So, um, probably the easiest way to do this is to go down to clipping areas. I'm gonna click on add a paint area. And so what the paint area does is that lets you bring your mouse in here and paint out areas that you don't or do want objects to be placed. So, for example, notice how right now there's an option in here for include or exclude. Well, we want to exclude objects below ground. Right? We also want a bigger brush. So I'm gonna bring this brush up to like, we'll call it 200. Notice how when I do that and I tab out of that box, this brush gets bigger. But what we wanna do is we wanna click on exclude, we wanna click on paint. So what that's gonna do, is that's gonna let us click and drag in here and paint out an area where we no longer want objects. So notice how I'm just painting this right here. 
And so anything inside of this blue box that I drew or this blue area is not going to be in here, right? So notice how at the moment these are getting masked out. They don't have the red boxes around them. We could do the same thing up here if we wanted to. So say you didn't want trees on top of your mountain up here. You just paint this out right here and it looks a little twitchy. But if you click on regenerate, notice how all of the things that were in those areas that we had selected are no longer in there. So you can use this to literally only scatter in areas where you want. So you can scatter inside of areas that are a certain um, altitude or um, a certain steepness. You can also paint areas in and out just like this. Then I could come back in here and let's say I wanted this to be maybe like 0 0.01. I could add a few more trees. So maybe even 0 0.012 like this. Then if I click on regenerate, notice how I get more trees in here. And so there's more things we could do in here, like rendering this out, using proxies and other things like that. But I wanted to give you an idea of how you can use those masking tools in order to precisely place objects on your terrains inside of SketchUp. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you've used Scatter before, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little it helps so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below but in any case thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys